Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and today we're going to be working on our practice quiz. Now for your homework, you actually have to also do um, homework number 19 that we started in class today. Please make sure that you do the back side of the worksheet, which looks like that. Sorry that it's a little bit fuzzy. This video today is going to be a little fuzzy, but please refer to your worksheet. Uh, number one, we're simplifying each of the expressions. When you are simplifying your expressions, let's get this clear here. You're using the distributive property. You can tell um, <clears throat> that numbers 1 through 8 are all distributed property because we see a number outside of the parentheses that's being multiplied as well as variables or numbers inside of a parentheses that is showing adding or subtracting. That's a little different than number 9, for example. Number 9, you see a division sign between the parentheses and then the 5, and so what we're not doing is we're not doing multiplication like we do with distributive property for 1 through 8. In distributive property, you share by multiplying the number on the outside of the parentheses. Okay, so this here would be negative 6. What I've done is now highlighted for you all the numbers on the outside of the parentheses. So I'm going to do a couple rainbows. So I'm going to do negative 6 times x. And when I do the first arrow rainbow, I would multiply that. I would get negative 6x. Then I would do a second arrow, negative 6 times negative 5. And when you see a minus, it's actually the same as a negative. So instead of leaving it behind, maybe possibly forgetting to bring it down while you do the problem, you can go ahead and bring it <clears throat> over right at the beginning. So we're going to do negative 6 times negative 5, which will give us 30. And that's positive, which actually is going to create that plus sign in between the two terms. So negative 6x added with 30 is simply just negative 6x plus 30. And we don't want to do anything more to that problem because I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Number one, you cannot add the negative 6x to 30 because 6 has an x, but 30 does not. Okay, then we have number 5. We're going to multiply the 8 with the 5, so that's our first rainbow. 8 times 5 is 40. Then we're going to do our second rainbow arrow, 8 times 7m. 8 times 7m is the same as 56m. So I'm going to write that next to the 40, but I'm going to write at a positive sign in the middle which is really a addition sign and I'm going to leave it like that because I cannot add a 40 with a 56 M since 40 doesn't have an M. Let's try number 8. We're going to distribute the negative 2 with the negative 4K. So we're going to multiply negative 2 times negative 4K. That will give me positive 8K. Positive. I could put a positive or choose not to. Then I'm going to do the second rainbow arrow, which is negative 2 times negative 5. Remember that minus is going to um, attach with the 5 as a negative 5, and there's a negative 2 there as well. So as I multiply negative 2 and negative 5, that's going to give me positive 10. And I'm going to box that answer because I cannot add 8k with 10. That doesn't have a k. Let's try number 9 together. Number 9, I'm going to do the first arrow, negative 9 times negative 2p. Again, you can do that mentally in your head. Negative times negative is positive, so we have positive 18, so we could put a plus in front if we want to. Then we have negative 9, and in the back we have positive 7, so a negative 9 times a 7 would simply give us a negative 63, and that negative is going to act as a subtraction sign. And then we're done because 18p cannot subtract with 63, since 63 does not have a p. For number 9, you're just going to simply be evaluating the expressions, so use PEMDAS. Number 9, we want to do the parentheses first. Please excuse this interruption, it's time. 5 times 3 is 15, then you're going to divide by 5, which gives you 3. Let's try number 11. We do see several parentheses here. Anytime you see more than one parentheses, you start from the inside and then you work your way to the outside of the parentheses. So the most inside parentheses would be the one plus the one. So we're gonna do that first, which is two. 
I have 15 minus 5 minus the 2, and that's in parentheses, and I'm going to later divide by 4. Then we're going to subtract, always subtract from left to right. So I'm going to take 15 minus 5, which is 10, then subtract that with 2, which is 8. Then I'm going to divide by 4, 8 divided by 4 will give me 2. I'm simply following PEMDAS, this should be a review of what you've already been doing since elementary school. Let's try number 16. I see division, I see multiplication. I see division and I see multiplication. When I'm looking at PEMDAS, I like to write PEMDAS going downward. And when I get to multiplying and dividing, I write them next to each other. And when I get to adding subtracting, I write them next to each other. The reason I do that is, if I see a bunch of multiplying and dividing, then I want to simply work from left to right. Same thing for addition and subtraction. If I see a bunch of adding and subtracting, I want to work from left to right. So in number 16, there's division, multiplication, and so I'm simply going to work from left to right and divide and multiply as I go. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then I'm going to multiply that with 12, then divide 3, then multiply 6. I like to write each step by bringing the number below it so that I can clearly follow each of the steps correctly. So in number 16, I'm now going to multiply 2 and 12, which is 24, then divide 3, then add multiply 6. I'm going to keep going. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Then times 6. My final answer will give me 48. I don't need to write any equal signs here. I would advise um, not to, so I don't have uh, those equal signs confusing us in any way. We're simply taking the expressions, evaluating them, or we can also say that we're simplifying the expression. Let's try number 15. We see multiplication, addition, subtraction, addition. I'm going to first do the multiplication first in PEMDAS. So that's 15. Then I'm going to add 6, subtract 4, add 6 again. When I do this addition subtraction problem, I'm just going to simply go from left to right because, again, when I use PEMDAS, when I get to adding and subtracting as the last two operations in math, I simply want to work that problem from left to right. So, I'm going to do 15 plus 6, which is 21. Subtract 4, then plus 6. 21 minus 4 is going to be 17. Then add 6, which will give us 23. I hope we're doing okay here. Alright, try the ones at the bottom yourself. As you're practicing um, your properties, make sure you look in your notes. For help, we took notes on that. If you are in Catalina, please refer to Chapter 2, Section 1 and 2 in the textbook for help on the properties. You know, Google is also a good website to go to. Uh, YouTube videos as well can be a, a quick, easy, helpful place to um, find answers to as well and help. Try this um, snowfall question by yourself. But we're going to try the back. We'll do one of the questions. When you were dining out here, take a minute to pause the video and read the question to yourself. I'm so sorry. I think my camera is a little bit... I don't know. I think it's the lighting in my room. We're going to write two equi equivalent expressions to show the total cost of two customers ordering one of each of the items. We're basically going to use the distributive property to show one of the expressions. Um, if I were to add up all of the costs of the sandwich, drink, and dessert, I would take 5, add it with 2, and then add it with 3. Then I could take the quantity of that uh, sum and then multiply it with 2 of the customers. And so I would get an e expression that looks like 2 multiplied by the sum of 5, 2, and 3. 
That's one expression, and that would show distributed property. Another expression I could write is I could take the number of sandwiches, two sandwiches times five dollars, and I'm going to add that with two drinks times the two dollar drink, plus two of the desserts that cost three dollars. So basically I multiplied each of these by two of the items. This was the cost of the first item, two for the drink, three for the dessert. This could be another expression that could result in an uh, expression for the total cost. So what is the total cost for the, each of the customers? Well, I can simply either take the first expression, I can use PEMDAS. So if I add the everything in the parentheses, I'll get 10, multiply by 2 and get $20. Or I could take this expression and do PEMDAS and get 10 plus 4 plus 6, which will also give me $20. So again, I know with the Common Core standards, a lot of what we're doing is showing work in different ways, as well as understanding with precision how to tackle these problems and when to use certain tools and strategies to do so. Please make sure that you also finish the back side of the homework number 19, which looks like this. And then make sure that you uh, study all the worksheets in your notes to help you with your quiz tomorrow. That's the other worksheet you need to finish. See you tomorrow. Bye.